Welcome to The Daily Coin. My name is Rory, and today is Thursday, September the 19th, 2019, and I have the very distinct honor and great pleasure of welcoming back to the show a gentleman who I hold in very high regard. His uh, technical analysis is incredible. Not only is he an, is, is a great writer and, and has this knack for sharing his uh, analysis with, with each one of you, he writes these incredible reports and he uh, operates a YouTube channel and on BitChute. You can find all of David Modell's work at crushthestreet.com and you can find a, a plethora of incredible reports that David puts together over at portfoliowealthglobal.com. David, welcome back to The Daily Coin. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, you absolutely have one of the best alternative media outlets out there uh, regarding not just gold, but all the markets and everything that uh, people need to know today in order to protect themselves against what's coming in the global markets. And I'm, I'm ready to talk about it. Well, thank you for that. That's very kind, David. And uh, the, the feeling is mutual. And I just want to touch very briefly on the situation that has happened that's kind of unfolding in uh, Saudi Arabia, and apparently the pieces aren't adding up for me. I mean, how do you have all of this damage going on, and all of a sudden the oil supply is back online? Um, you know, within two weeks, and supposedly you know fifty percent of their production was knocked out o overnight, and this has a dramatic impact on everything that we do on planet earth i mean the oil market uh, is just incredible what it the, the the reach that it has and the apparently they knocked off five percent of the global daily production and now they're saying that that's going to be fully realized back online within the next two weeks i mean what do you what do you think what are your thoughts on what's happened over there david and and as far as the impact that this is going to have going forward? Oh, the impact is going to be huge. I don't know if you've had a chance to see the satellite photos of the strikes. Uh, did you actually get to see those yet? Yes, I did. Yeah, it, it's. I, I encourage everybody to look it up, Google it if you have to. The satellite photos released by the U.S. government, uh, it's what they call surgical precision okay the uh the strikes and for people who don't know the details this is saudi aramco their oil facilities were struck in some targeted attacks targeted strikes uh, at least 20 drones and several cruise missiles uh so yeah the saudi arabian uh, oil facilities were shut down uh supposedly they're in the process of coming back online, as they say, but this is huge. This is an act of war. Uh, and we know that Trump is not just going to sit idly as this happens. It's not affecting the markets much yet as we're recording this, but I just don't think that people appreciate how major, how impactful uh, this is. Uh, what's it going to affect? Well, people think that it's just going to affect the oil markets. It did cause the price of WTI crude to jump up by 12% in one day. It's retracing half of that, granted. But if people don't realize that this is going to affect the entire broader stock market, the bond markets, the futures markets, commodities, of course, whatever you're involved in, it's going to impact it in a big way. And I believe in going risk off. Uh, anybody who just has their retirement account in a 60-40 uh, stocks and bonds mix right now is going to be in for the shock of a lifetime. I really didn't think that it was going to be that far reaching, but I knew that it was going to be impactful. And I, and I, I tend to agree with, with what you're saying, David. I mean, but I just hadn't thought of it in, in that broad a terms. And there was one other piece of information or situation that's happened that I wanted to get your take on. And then we're going to, we're going to kind of springboard from there. And that is the situation with uh, J.P. Morgan and their trading desk. 
And uh, Craig Hemke released a, an article this week that is in, that's really incredible. And he quotes uh, a Ned Naylor Leland uh, tweet. He's got a Ned Naylor Tweeland, Ned Naylor Leland tweet in within embedded in this article. And Ned Naylor Leland is actually quoting from Bullion Star. Uh, Ronan Manley, who wrote an incredible piece also uh, earlier this week about the J.P. Morgan uh, market manipulation. And come to find out, Mr. Nowak, who is the uh, global managing director for J.P. Morgan's precious metals team, he's been in that position since 2006. Yep. J.P. Morgan has been crying foul and saying that they um, that they inherited, you know, this criminal activity from Bear Stearns, and that that's where that they're innocent and it's not systemic, and you know, we didn't we didn't know nothing. We don't know nothing. Well, they didn't they didn't get Bear Stearns until two thousand and eight. And uh, Mr. Nowak had been in place two years prior to that. So what's your take on all this, David? Yeah, and and this is also a big deal. Of course, you won't uh, hear about it much in the mainstream media, which is why people need to listen to your podcast on on the regular. Uh, but yeah, Mr. Nowak, our, our friend Michael Nowak, it has been revealed, uh, joined with J.P. Morgan in 1996. So this has been going on for a while. Ten years later, exactly, 2006, he began managing the Global Precious Metals team over at J.P. Morgan. Uh, so this has been going on for a while. And for people who don't know the background behind this, uh, the Department of Justice, U.S. regulators, have directly now accused J.P. Morgan and their precious metals trading desk of being basically a criminal enterprise. Uh, the exact wording is a massive multi-year scheme to manipulate the market for precious metals futures contracts and defraud – that's their word – and mine too, uh, <laughs> defraud market participants. Uh, so yeah, they knew. Uh, of course, uh, J.P. Morgan, the the fat cats over at the head of J.P. Morgan, are going to say that they didn't know about this, but they had to know about this. They've been doing this for a long time. Uh, they're going to make excuses, but this is uh, possibly big enough to take down uh, J.P. Morgan in a big way. Uh, I'm glad I'm not invested in any bank stocks right now. I, I generally am not. I, I don't believe in the, that banking system. Uh, so, hey, you know what? If you're in something much safer, much more secure, such as gold, uh, such as silver, you're doing fine. You're watching this with popcorn in your hand and laughing as I am. Exactly. That's that's what I'm doing. I'm just I just go out and get another uh, piece of gold or another piece of silver and, and keep on going. Just keep yep. laughing. Yep. And I <laughs> love it. And this leads me into the next piece, uh, David, which is the miners. And I actually wrote a piece mm -hmm. a couple of days ago about um, the mining industry because apparently I am gold is on the skids and looking at being acquired uh, mm -hmm. by the Chinese who were who played a big role, if you remember, earlier this year in assisting uh, Barrick Gold acquire uh, Rand Gold. And when and now and then and then right after that, Newmont um, acquired who was it that they got? Can't remember. It's just slipping my mind for some Gold Corp. That was then. Mm -hmm. That was a somewhat of a hostile uh, bid. I mean, they Gold Corp didn't didn't actually want to want to sell, and they sure didn't want to sell to Barrick. And Newmont came along and made them an offer that they couldn't refuse. But before that, you had the Barrick Gold deal where they where they purchased Rand Gold. So you've got these major gold mines that are merging with one another. And I am gold is looking right now at being taken over by the Chinese national uh, gold company. And yeah. 
the China Gold International Resources uh, Corporation is the name of the company, and it's uh, state-owned, China National Gold Group, and they are looking to acquire I Am Gold. What are your thoughts, David, on what's going on with the miners right now and the role that this is playing with the higher gold uh, that we're seeing right now? Yeah, well, you know that I'm a big fan of precious metals and miners as well right now. Uh, so I, I do see the consolidations happening in the industry at the top, but this leaves a lot of opportunities, actually. Uh, yes. Investors realize that there are risks mounting to the broader uh, indices. Uh, not long ago, the U.S. imposed new 15% tariffs on $300 billion, with a B, billion dollars worth of Chinese goods. Approximately 92% of all apparel imported from China will be subject to taxation paid for by American companies and consumers, so we should expect to see increased inflation. And this is going to have a huge impact on gold. If you're not in it yet, you need to get in. Uh, let's look at history. In 13 out of 15 of the worst months for the S&P 500 going back to 1987, gold outperformed the broader market, sometimes by as much as 110 basis points. And yeah, you said it. Gold is having a pretty good year. It's having a tremendous year. Gold is now trading near a six-year high, and it is at the highest point against many world currencies, just not the dollar. So uh, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop with the dollar, <laughs> which yes. will happen. Um, look, the dollar is trading at all-time highs. This is not because the world trusts America or anything like that. Uh, it's because institutions, the smart money, and central banks are de-risking. Uh, this creates a need for U.S. currency. It's an artificial rise, and it won't sustain for very much longer. In a world without open borders, countries need precious metals, and therefore this is fundamentally a political bull market. Um, as you know, retail really hasn't bought into the gold and silver bull market yet. They think it's a fake breakout. I don't believe so. Uh, I don't think it's a coincidence that gold accounts for more than 60% of central bank balance sheet reserves right now. And when people wake up to the fact that fiat currencies are going to drop big time, I think 30 to 40 percent in the next decade. Um, that's just my opinion. You uh, think that long? I, you think the next decade? Yeah, you think it's going to take that long? Takes that long. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, within the next decade, could okay. be quicker than that. Um, I mean, with central bankers printing money like it's newspaper, I don't see why gold couldn't rise to 10,000. I see that happening. Uh, so look, if you want more information on that, if people want to know how much of uh, physical precious metals should they own, should they get into the miners and how can they do that for maximum profit? Uh, we've got some reports at portfoliowealthglobal.com. First of all, people need to sign up to the newsletter that's on the homepage, uh, and then they can get some free reports, portfoliowealthglobal.com forward slash gold playbook, gold playbook. That tells the multiple ways to invest in precious metals, as well as PortfolioWealthGlobal.com forward slash 4W, the number four, the letter W. That's about four specific winners that we've already had in the mining sector since June, and they're already up over 60%. Uh, I can give you a couple of those uh, right now or today, but uh, you know, you're going to want to get the whole report to get all four of those. Okay. I've, I'm, I'm guessing that probably... First Majestic Silver that Keith Newmeyer uh, owns and operates. How did you know? First Majestic, yeah. <laughs> because, because Keith Newmeyer is brilliant and we love him. We love the fact that he is so outspoken against what J.P. Morgan and these criminal bankers have been doing. And when you have a com an entire community that respects you in the way that the gold and silver community respects him and what he's doing, well, two and two still equals four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got First Majestic on there. Uh, that's uh, FR in Canada and AG on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, also, I'm sure you're well aware of this one. Uh, this is a company headed by Rick Rule, uh, who is a genius, uh, Sprott, uh, which is S-P-O-X-F. Uh, I'm sure you're well aware of that one. Mm -hmm. um, anybody who doesn't know about Rick Rule, research his name. He's a multimillionaire. 
considered one of the smartest investors the world has ever seen. And Sprott is basically the Berkshire Hathaway uh, of precious metals. That That's the only way I could describe it. Um, so like, it's kind of like if Warren Buffett's company is a play on the health of America, then Sprott is a play on the health of the resource sector. Uh, so that, that's another, that's another one to consider, but uh, if you want all four, you're going to have to check out the report. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And, and first majestic, that's been, that's, that's a stalwart. Uh, company. Yeah. I mean, the the what what Keith Newmeyer has done is just absolutely phenomenal, yeah. and uh, I love I love and respect his work so much. It's just it's it's inc- I can't say enough good things about him. Yeah, I, they, I don't call you, him, they don't they don't call him Mister Silver for nothing. Put exactly. It that now, I sent you uh, an article, a link to an article about the hundred year low. In the miners right now, miners being valued at 100-year low, says yeah. Bernstein Research. I mean, would you tend to agree with this assessment and as far as where we're at right now? Or do you think that, they're, that the miners are... Where, where, what is your, what's your take on this? Yeah, I, I think the miners will run. Uh, yeah, they're at a 100-year low. And a lot of people who are quote unquote momentum traders would say that's a bad thing, but I'm a contrarian. Uh, if most people are going one direction, I'm going to go in the opposite direction because I view, view this as a huge opportunity, uh, especially with what I think is going to happen when it, in regards to the dollar, uh, which we just talked about. And that's going to push uh, gold upwards. And what's what that's going to do to the miners is going to be unbelievable. Uh, I mean, Right now, we have a situation where the president, Donald Trump, is basically calling the Nixon bluff. Uh, Nixon, as we all recall, took us off the gold standard, uh, but he didn't just take the dollar off the gold standard. He took the whole world off the gold standard because everything was pegged to the dollar. Uh, The dollar was pegged to gold. And when you decouple the dollar from gold, you decouple the world from gold. Um, And the U.S., a dollar does have world reserve currency status for the time being, uh, but this is not the 1970s anymore. Things are very different. You can't recreate that situation of hyperinflation today and deal with it in the same way. You can't even raise bond yields to two and a half or three percent nowadays. Uh, the Fed chair tried that around Christmas of last year, and that caused the S and P to crash 20 percent. It's not like the days of Paul Volcker uh, bringing the Fed funds rate up to 20 percent back in 1980. You cannot do that now. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and and so what does that mean? Well, okay, put it this way: if you take someone who just refinanced their loan at near zero rates, and you threaten to increase their interest payments by 30 or 80 or 100 percent, that's unsustainable. Not going to happen. So what Trump doing right now is he's saying, look, we're a nation that can only function at zero rates. Therefore, I don't see any reason for the United States government to pay out interest when we're the world's largest economy. I mean, he's looking at Italy, Belgium, Bulgaria, Switzerland, Germany, Japan, Sweden. He's looking at these countries paying zero interest rates or even negative interest rates on their loans. And he's saying, why can't our taxpayers get the same deal? Uh, So, look, I don't agree with the Federal Reserve uh, cutting rates to zero immediately. Uh, That would shake the foundations of the global economy. I don't want that to happen. But I believe, yeah, Trump is calling the bluff. He's saying that rates are never going up again. Let's just slash into zero, basically make the Fed irrelevant, which I'm fine with, and let the government do the heavy lifting, jobs, infrastructure, defense, everything Trump wants to do. Uh, so, yeah, this is going to be huge for gold, huge for silver, even bigger for leveraged plays like the miners, like the two stocks we've mentioned so far. Uh, if people want more information on what Trump is going to do, what the Fed is going to do, uh, they can go to PortfolioWealthGlobal.com forward slash Fed, F-E-D. Uh, we have three separate report- reports, actually. We have that one. We have forward slash Trump and forward slash enemy three separate reports, uh, and we're going to release an exclusive report in the next few days for subscribers only to the newsletter. So you got to go there on the homepage. Uh, It's it's free. And the founder of PortfolioWealthGlobal.com is going to uh, reveal something that is under the radar. Nobody's talking about it. It's what Trump is going to do in the next 12 months. 
not only to get reelected, but to win it in a landslide. Mark my words on this one. It's going to happen. Okay. Now, what as far as this zero or the either ZERP or NERP, zero interest rate policy or negative interest rate policy. So you're seeing that as being almost assured at this point. I mean, I personally have been calling uh, for David a a one percent uh, for the Fed to back out a hundred bips between now and the end of the first quarter of 2020. The F the the FOMC is meeting this week, and I I don't know if they're going to uh, lower the the uh, Fed rate this week or not, but I'm betting that they're going to they're going to take another they've already taken a quarter off and i'm betting that they're going to take a minimum of three of another 75 bips i think they're going to take a full 100 bips off between now and the end of the first quarter and that how do how does that play into what your thinking is as far as the zerp and nerp and how does that what role do you see that playing with this uh, 50 and 100 year bond that that Trump is talking about. I mean, what kind of nonsense is that? Yeah, well, Trump has already uh, tweeted that he'd like a full point or greater cut uh, coming this week. Uh, that's not likely to happen at all. Right. But there there will be a cut. Uh, there's a 100 percent chance probability priced into the futures and options markets of that happening. So it's pretty much assured. Uh, interest rates will go to zero in America. That's where we're headed. Uh, Trump is going to want to do 50 or even 100 year bonds, which sounds kind of uh, ridiculous on the face of it. But here's what he wants. He wants to kick the can down the road as much as possible. He wants interest free debt for the U.S. government is what he wants. Uh, Then uh, that way, obviously, a lot of money will get freed up. He's seeing countries around the world do it. Uh, There are precedents for this. Canada has a 50-year bond. Mexico, Belgium, and Ireland have 100-year bonds. More than a dozen countries today have bonds lasting between 40 and 100 years. Most people don't know that. Wow. Uh, Yeah. Uh, The European ECB, European Central Bank, as we know, just cut cut its interest rate target from negative 0.4%, already ridiculous and negative to negative 0.5%. So they're financing the Eurozone's debt. Developed nations around the world, as we discussed, Germany, Japan, and so on, all have negative or zero interest rates already. Uh, at, At the moment, the US government pays $600 billion a year on interest on the debt, not the debt, just the interest. Uh, So Trump wants to refinance, plain and simple. Uh, Imagine what an extra savings of $600 billion a year could do if we didn't have to pay that. Um, A lot of people think that uh, we should just start cutting another round of cutting taxes again. I don't believe that's the right time for that. Uh, we'll, We'll be in a huge deficit. America's problem is not that we don't have enough tax cuts. It's a productivity problem. Too many unfunded liabilities due to be paid out to the baby boomers and others. Uh, Yeah, tax cuts are not what we need. What we need is more productivity, more people educated in in this country. We need to revitalize people's love of business. Americans need to love what they do and take pride in doing it well. That's extremely important. Uh, That's what we talk about in the PortfolioWealthGlobal.com newsletter, of course. Um, So where do we go from here? Well, expect zero interest rates. Expect 50-year bonds, 100-year bonds. Yeah, they're going to do what it takes so that we don't have to keep at least paying the interest on the debt. They're going to kick the can down the road. As an investor, how do you manage this global economy? Uh, Well, uh, we're going to put a report out on that, PortfolioWealthGlobal.com forward slash reset, R-E-S-E-T, because I am expecting the reset button to be hit. At some point, governments will stop caring what other governments have to say about them. They're going to do write-offs. They're going to do defaults, restructurings, all this crazy, desperate things. They're going to hit the reset button, and no one's going to leave this uninjured. So there are ways you can prepare for this. We talked about precious metals. Uh, We could talk about what kind of stocks to get into, whether the stock market's cheap or expensive right now. The answer might surprise you. Uh, But if people get the report, they're going to find out more about that. Well, is is the stock market? I mean, in, in the equities, 
the uh, Dow Jones or the S and P? I mean, should people? I mean, because personally, those scare me more than anything. I mean, I would rather have my money in. I would rather have my investment portfolio be in the uh, miners, where I where I feel confident that there's something that that's that there's some major upside to that. And when I say major, I mean real upside. Whereas I look at the stock market, the equities, all I see is risk. I see lies and risk. That's all that I see. And obviously, you see something different there, David. What what's what's going on? Yeah, well, in the short term, that's the thing. In the short, you know, okay. The, the mar- yeah, the market can remain irrational longer than you and I can remain solvent. Yes. I didn't come up with that, as you know. <laughs> uh, but there is there is truth to this. Uh, so it can have that last gasp, as they say, that last bit of euphoria. And when you compare it to other investments, uh, with the exception of, I would say, precious metals, uh, a lot of people are considering the stock market to be cheap right now. Um, because you have to keep in mind, interest rates, interest rates have never been this low. Uh, the main companies that make up the S and P 500 are growing at four and a half or even five and a half percent per year. And they're paying a 1.8% average dividend and they're growing their dividends as well. So yeah, it's true. Companies are buying back shares of their own stock at regular amounts, uh, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's only bad if you're using debt to do that. And most companies are not using debt to do that. They're using their earnings to do that right now. And actually, instead of uh, doing that, they could have used that money to pay even higher dividend yields. So if they hadn't bought back shares of their own stock and instead had paid bigger dividends, then the dividend yields on the S&P 500 would be five and a half or even six percent right now. There would be record highs in dividend yields, and everybody would recognize that stocks are, in that sense, a bargain. Uh, And it's not a bargain because uh, the market is rigged or manipulated or companies, uh, you know, it's, it's not that. It's because companies at the moment are making a fortune, and they're making a fortune because wages are suppressed, unions and workers are not organizing anymore, and it's easy to replace them. Corporations are very, very profitable at the moment. The wealthy are making a fortune. Stock market investors are scared right now. It's a lot like what we saw back in 2008, 2009. Now, with that said, I think the markets will, in the short term, go to all-time highs. It's really not that far from it right now. I believe the S&P 500 will, in the short term, reach 3,500. I believe the NASDAQ will reach the 10,000 level. The Dow Jones will reach 36,000. Wow. Uh, They'll get there not because stocks are a bargain, but because they're a bargain compared to other things going on in the world. Uh, If we were living in a normalized world, stocks wouldn't be a bargain right now. But when you compare them to whatever else you can make money with, except for precious metals, of course, uh, stocks are actually a good deal just for the time being. Would I hold on to uh, the S&P 500, uh, let's say an ETF tracking it forever, for 10 years, five years, two years? No, I would not. But right now, expect that last bit of euphoria to happen uh, before the house of cards finally does collapse. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm, I'm a little more conservative than that. I mean, and, and for me, speaking for myself, uh, none of this, none of, of what I say is to be misconstrued as investment advice. I'm not doing that, tell, talking about what I believe. And for me, it's, it's, I, would, I feel much more comfortable with something to do with the miners and, sure. and physical, physical uh, precious metals because that, that's just, wow. I, I, like I said, the, the, I got out of the Dow Jones a uh, long time ago, years and years and years ago, and not regretted it one bit. Not yeah. one, not for one second have do I have any regrets from getting out of it. And the uh, the miners I'm getting ready to jump into. There's three or four that I'm looking at right now, and man, if they, because for me, David. If I'm looking at a mining company that I can, because it's all a bet, it's all a gamble, uh, it's the way that I look at it. And if I can, if I can make, you know, twenty times my money, 
and the miners, which wouldn't be that unusual. I mean, that's to me that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, because I'm not going to make my, I'm not going to make twenty times my money if I put it into the S and P or the Dow Jones or my wrong. Yeah. No, absolutely. And uh, gold has handily outperformed the S&P 500 since the turn of the century, since yes. 2000. Uh, so, yeah, no, there's no doubt about it. And I, I'm certainly not telling people to get into the S&P 500 right now. I just want to alleviate people's frustration that they're going to feel if and when it keeps going up in the short term for what seems like no good reason. Uh, there, is, there is a reason. It may not be a good reason or a valid one, but there will be a reason for it. Uh, the elites and the fat cats at the top, the bankers, the, the banksters and fraudsters, are going to continue to be profitable in the short term. And the one tool, the one weapon that the Fed has, will continue to work for a little while. So I don't want people to think that it's going to collapse tomorrow and start shorting the market or anything like that. I think that would be a dangerous move. Well, I think everything they do is a dangerous move. That's why I yeah. like betting against them. That's why, you know, physical gold, physical silver in my hand says, I don't trust you. I don't trust them one bit. That's what it says. And when I invest in the miners, I'm telling them that I, I, I don't trust you one bit, right. but I'm going to, I'm going to take a chance over here. <laughs> you know? Exactly. And that's, exactly. and that's all that I can do. I mean, yeah. that's the and, best and, that I can uh, do. Yeah, no, and, and there is no trust there. Uh, people exactly. don't trust it. They don't trust their government. They don't trust uh, their currency. They don't trust the dollar. Nope. I can't say it. Who could blame people for not trusting the U.S. dollar? There's a currency war going on. Everybody talks about the trade war. There's a currency war going on. It's going to decimate the dollar um, 30 to 40 percent within a decade. That's my conservative estimate. Uh, likely to happen a lot sooner. Um, I, I would say the U.S. dollar has about four, maybe five years left to remain uh, the world's reserve currency and as strong as it is right now, if even that long. And then that's it. Uh, and we, we have a trade deal in the works. Um, once the trade deal is inked, once interest rates go to zero in the United States, uh, once China starts to do their own negotiations with other countries using the yuan as a reserve currency, I believe you're going to see the U.S. dollar drop by 20 to 25 percent immediately in real terms. Uh, so this is another reason to own gold and silver. You're not doing it to get rich overnight. It doesn't work like that. Uh, you want to make sure you don't have a 20 or 25 percent reduction in your wages, your purchasing power, your quality of life. And, and uh, folks, you can forget about high wages ever again in the United States exactly. for the vast majority of professions. Unless you're in an occupation that cannot easily be replaced by a machine or outsourced, you're in jeopardy right now. Therefore, you need to make sure that you're your profession is uniquely American. Uh, you want to get into healthcare, real estate, something that's not going to be taken over by cheap labor. I mean, you have to keep in mind, 48 countries right now manufacture goods even cheaper than China. And China doesn't manufacture junk anymore. This is not the China of 25 years ago. They have some of the biggest factories in the world. It's a financial and technological empire. You cannot afford to underestimate China today. Uh, so, but look, there are ways to capitalize on this as an investor. Uh, again, physical hard assets are a great way to do it. But if you want to leverage your money, uh, over the next few days, we're going to release a report on Portfolio Wealth Global. Uh, you know, the news newsletters on the homepage. Uh, we're going to release a report with American companies that are able to get their brands successfully into China. China has an up and coming middle class, and those companies are going to make a fortune in the next decade. Mark me, uh, mark my words on that one. So we're going to launch an exclusive report on these companies only for subscribers, and again, get into those companies uh, that that you've been talking, you know, Rory's been talking about. First Majestic, man, what a what a great company, been around for a long time. Long time. Keith Newmeyer, um, you know, we talked about Sprott, Rick Rule. I mean, you go with the winners, you go with the right. proven winners, and and that makes you a winner in the long term. Yeah, I mean that's one of the things that that I learned a long time ago is is that if you want to be wealthy, do what the wealthy people do. Yeah, you don't, yeah. you know, and they don't take on debt. They don't take on all of. They don't do all these things. And if they do take, if they do use debt, they use it as a tool, and that's yeah. it. It's yep. used as yep. a tool. It's not. Yep. 
They're not in debt. They use debt. Yeah. So well said. They, big they difference. Use debt and and they, they don't rely on it. It's not a crutch for them. And and that's what that's what great companies do. Uh, exactly. And and they're not bleeding money. I mean, these are things we look for in in great companies and great miners as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, but you and I are putting out that great information to people so that they're not going to be victims of the currency war, uh, so that they're not just sitting in the S and P 500 for years and years thinking that's going to keep going up. Uh, a lot of people are not even aware of what is in their retirement accounts. <laughs> they, yes. they let their, they let their workplace take care of it for them, or they let their, uh, their spouse take care of it for them. Somebody like that. They shouldn't do that um, ever. Yeah, no, you got to take control of your own funding, your own money, your own capital. You worked hard for it. No one's going to care about your money as much as you do, not even close, certainly not the government. Uh, and if, if you're just sitting in a lot of cash right now, uh, that really is dead money. Uh, actually, we have a report on that, PortfolioWealthGlobal.com forward slash dead, D-E-A-D, about how it is dead money. What's going to happen to your to your fiat currency? Rob Kirby, I, I'm sure you're well aware of his, his point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people have called him the Sid Vicious <laughs> uh, of, the, uh, of the commodities <laughs> markets. Uh, he once said that the, all fiat currencies will go to their true value sooner or later, and that true value is zero. Yeah, I think uh, so, it was Voltaire that said that actually. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> it, he he might have been quoting him, but yes. you know, that is very very true. I, I wish it I had is. come up with it. <laughs> I'm just not yeah. that smart, but uh, <laughs> it, it's no, I, I we love uh, Rob Kirby around here and and have been hold him in high regard and and a great deal of respect for his work and such a great mind. Um uh, Yeah. It's one of the things that is happening, David, is, or that I've seen in, in my own home, is people not knowing or understanding what's in their investment portfolio. Yeah. Like you said, they allow some entity outside of themselves, be it their workplace, be it their spouse, be it some other other entity that takes care of and makes this makes these life altering decisions for them. And yeah. one of the things that I learned very early on when I got into this was that when you start doing um, what we're talking about, it's very lonely. And I didn't, yeah. and it was like, you got to, what are we talking about? It's lonely. And it's very lonely. Believe me, it is. people it don't is. like you. They think you're crazy. They will call you all kinds of ugly names, and it doesn't matter. I, I, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, my wealth is dependent upon my decisions, not yeah. someone else's. And if I, give else's. The, yeah. if I give those reins over to somebody else, then whose fault is that? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. Don't count on anybody else to manage your money. For Definitely don't count on the government to do it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, I mean, we have a $22.5 trillion national debt and it's growing. It's going to hit 23 trillion soon. Uh, the national debt is now 11 times the annual federal revenues. Uh, the current debt to GDP, uh, yeah, debt to GDP ratio is it's up to 105% now. Uh, so America owes more than it's producing. So these guys uh, are great. They're great money managers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to be broke. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, and the, the federal budget deficit is expected to hit $1 trillion for the first time in history. So if you're counting on the government to remain solvent, not to mention in, uh, the government entitlement programs, Social Security, uh, you know, Medicare, Medicaid, as well as pension funds, if you think those are going to remain solvent, uh, by the time you're ready, you and I are ready to retire. Uh, it's not going to happen. Now, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to correct you on one thing there, David, because yeah. this is and this is a point that is near and dear to my heart, and that's Social Security. Social Security is not an entitlement. That right. is something that that we have been forced into, right. and they have taken our money, it's stolen from us. That they now owe me. I'm now owed by the U.S. Treasury that money. They took it yeah. from me without my consent, 
It's not an entitlement. This right. is not an entitlement. This is my this is my funds that went into that account. They said, we're going to take money from, we're going to take funds from you in your name, and then we're going to give that money back to you. Now, that's and not an entitlement. Up. Yep. Uh, no, I, I agree 100%. And they're going to take that money from you, hold on to it for decades, invest it at profit, and then maybe give it back to you slowly. So it, if you live long enough, right. Uh, and, and if you don't, they get to keep that money. So, yeah. Yeah. No, we've got to totally stop agree. using that. We've got to stop calling social security an entitlement because it's not, it is anything right. but it, Medicare, yeah, Medicaid, all those other programs that you listed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Those are all entitlements. I agree completely. Welfare system itself is nothing but just one gigantic handout, one gigantic entitlement, one gigantic system of fraud. Thanks for fraud. That's all that it is. But Social Security is completely different. Yeah. And I, I'm using heavy quote fingers <laughs> uh, around the word entitlement in, in regards to Social Security. Uh, yeah, I, I think theft perhaps is a better word for it's it. Much better. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I tell you, the, the government propaganda machine has instilled the word uh, entitlement into my head so much that I, I, <laughs> I called it an entitlement, but you're right. It really is not. And it is not. That's a fair point. It is not by any stretch of the imagination. David, this has been awesome. I could continue this conversation the rest of the afternoon. Uh, and I certainly appreciate all of the knowledge, all the wisdom that you've shared uh, here today. I greatly appreciate it. And when we, when we started out, I was touting crushthestreet.com and you've been talking about portfoliowealthglobal.com. So we're going to be able to find you in both locations or how to help me to understand how that works. Sure. Well, I'm a writer for crushthestreet.com and people are certainly welcome to check out my articles on there as well as all the other fine uh, outstanding writers on there as well. Uh, but uh, I, I am a representative of PortfolioWealthGlobal.com. Uh, I help them put out the newsletter, which is free to the public right there on the homepage. And I encourage people to check it out for more of the up to the minute information and resources and trading ideas that we put out there. Yeah. And Portfolio Wealth Global, that's really just uh, investment ideas and reports on how to make money and mm -hmm. not, not so much uh, what Crush the Street or what the Daily Coin does as far as just information, right? Yeah, I mean, Crush the Street has ideas as well, actionable ideas. And yes. I'm a huge fan of, of what they do over there. Uh, and I, I contribute to, you know, writing and, uh, you know, ideas there as well. So yeah, people are certainly welcome to check out both of those. Uh, because CrushTheStreet.com has reports as well. We, I've read many of them, and uh, they're they're quite excellent. And uh, but you know what you're doing, Rory, is, is putting out the information there on a regular basis that people need, not uh, the government propaganda machine. You know, it, I, I learned a lot today. Just I'm going to think of the word entitlement differently from now on. I'm I'm going to think twice before I use that term. <laughs> Yeah, especially with Social Security. I mean, and that's the that's yep. the thing is is that I actually wrote about that as far as you know the way that we've been trained to use language uh, to carry water for these criminals. There's no yeah. such thing as money; it's currency. We yeah. don't use money. That's why I have to stop myself and use the word like fund or or currency or you know if I'm talking about gold and silver, then we're talking about money. But if you're talking about currency, Federal Reserve notes. Those are, those are fiat currencies that they have no intrinsic value. Zero. Yeah. Right. Right. So interesting. I, I'll never use those words the same way again. I mean, we just have to, we just have to, we just have to stop ourselves and retrain ourselves because we've been trained to use these words our whole life. Mm-hmm. For sure. And, the, and for sure. the reason there's a reason for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and it's we're not to our to benefit. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> And we're both trying to help people reprogram and rewire themselves so they exactly. can think on their own and self-educate rather than depend on mommy and daddy government to uh, tell them what's right and what's wrong, for sure. Exactly. That's exactly right. Well, David, we'll pick it up right there in, in a few weeks and uh, and take it, take it to the next level, if you're okay with that. Absolutely. 
Well, all right, David. Well, you thank you so much once again for all your time. And I certainly uh, look forward to speaking with you in the not too distant future. Most definitely.